you're going to test fly the prototype uh, from the beginning i understand it uh, without even a test pilot on board so uh, and that's very much thanks to the area you are in in, in the california you know the, the, there's not so much so many civilians around so so this uh, i think I, can you tell us about the location maybe we're building this aircraft what's called a, a, as an as an, uh, an optionally piloted system it's not something that we're uh, going to be certifying this aircraft to do that is that is that way when you bring this to market it's going to be operating with two pilots but essentially when you have the chance that you really don't um that you really don't have a lot to design a clean sheet part 25 aircraft you can design the architecture so that it's essentially controllable remotely and so some of these test flights um we're going to be doing remotely essentially uh operating them in, in, like a large drone um uh, but but it's always going to have that sort of bi-directionally optionality and, and you know one of the great things about doing that is that we can be be sort of in the uh there's there's plenty of airfields out here that that essentially if you remove the pilot from the equation you just have to be aware of of uh the safety of, of of those on the ground and if you're in a very remote location such as you know desert type airports that becomes very very much more, more viable and you can also I understand shorten the time frame of the testing so you don't have to uh, thanks to if you can achieve you know testing without a pilot uh, I mean, it becomes uh, safer. Uh, I mean, the the marginal for safety uh, it doesn't have to be so extreme high when you're testing it without the pilot. It, it, we're talking about uh, you know um, what do you call it, half a decimal or something in difference, but it makes all the difference. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I I think that this is really where where where, where uh, I, I think the, the broad maybe if, you know can elevate a little bit like the broader vision here. I think is that like look at driverless cars right it's the um, it's the um, um what's been driving that development you know it's fairly easy for people to build a driverless car you know have a sort of running running through like a circuit or you know a fenced off place and and showing that it worked and it was it was very difficult to to get it into the real life operation because every time you're sort of adding a def uh, a decimal of, of reliability it's become so much more work so what what i think is really exciting what we've seen a lot of these for instance the ev tall players are doing the this the um, the the people that are building flying cars is that they start by flying autonomously and this or remotely and then this this sort of if you do that in a in a, in a shorter circuit you could you could get to that a much earlier fa uh, phase than when you're if you were to be flying remotely or autonomously uh commercially so uh so i think that's going to be a really important thing so just just some numbers like you have you have uh for commercial aircraft you have a you have a safety record of 10 to the power of minus uh nine which means that less than one incident in a billion flight hours or one one you know catastrophic incident in a billion flight hours for flight tests, you relax that by a factor of thousand, so you're at one in a million instead, uh, which is still pretty safe. Uh, but if you do remote testing or any other type of testing that does not involve a human in the loop, you can obviously relax that to you know 99%. You can practice destructive testing. I mean, one way of looking at it is sort of almost the way that um, that SpaceX has done it with their with their rockets, where they're essentially having uh, very low reliability on success, and they're able to iterate very, very fast. Now, so that's sort of a little bit how we're looking at it as a North Star, saying that, you know, what if we remove so some of this, uh, that capability? What can we do? Obviously, you could also do much more extensive testing. Pilots need to go to the bathroom. They need to sleep. They need to eat. There's, like, if you could automate a lot of that testing, you can you can go very far. I think obviously when you do that, you don't want to be spending all your resources uh, developing and certifying an, an autonomous systems for it. So that's why we're we're sort of doing going for this op optionally piloted approach where we're uh, we can sort of fork this off in, di in different ways as we as we progress.